And I just honor Pastor Joss and Pastor Kimmy even just for allowing me to stand in this place. And it feels different. Yeah, I have done a singles conference. But I'm like, Lord, it's different actually being a member. But I'm so glad to be a part of our nation's family. we sit down, give a shout out to the parents in the house. But if you would, go ahead and turn to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. We're going to hop right into the room. 2 Kings chapter 4. Lord, and we thank you. Thank you for this day. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. And it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And the question or the statement for you today is, it's in the house. But taking it even further, just so that we understand, it's in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we see here, and we're going to stop there. Go ahead and say the big statement. So it says, this certain woman, that she was one of the wives of the sons of the prophets. That just did not mean that she was actually, he was a son of the prophets, but they were like, a company of prophets that traveled with the major prophets, as they call it. They would have been those that traveled with Elisha. And what happened was they ran into a situation that even though he was a son of a prophet, it says here that he died. And this lets us know that sometimes we want to believe that just because we're serving and working for God that we never encounter any challenges. Well, this woman here... She encountered a situation, and it says that she cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, let me look, he was your servant. Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Now, she's already lost her husband, and now here the creditors are coming to try to take her sons away. And there are times in life, earlier we were talking about the victory, there are times in life where just because we have one situation that knocks us down, the enemy would desire for us to stay in a down situation. She could have said, I've already lost my son, my, my husband. Let me, you know, just go ahead and take my sons. But there has to come a time where we become aggressive about the things of God. That even though she had lost her husband, did not mean that she was going to allow her sons to be taken away. Just because I got knocked down doesn't mean I have to stay down. And sometimes we encounter situations in life that will knock us down. But when I get down, God has given me the ability to bounce back up. And so she said, he feared the Lord. And so the response was to him, he said, well, what what, what you want me to do? And then he went on and said, what do you have in your house? And see, here's the thing about the creditor is, a creditor is a person that you owe a debt to. A creditor is someone that puts you in a situation where you're lost or you're lacking. When you are in debt to some type, one, sometimes it can leave you in a space where you are behind. And your debt may not be the credit card company like mine is. Your debt may be that in life you did not have the parents and the foundation, the finances, the support, and it left you in a place in life where it felt like you were left behind. And even though she was in a behind place and she didn't have a rich uncle that she could call and say, they're trying to take my sons away. Can, can
shall I do for you? Verse 2. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Yeah. And she said, your main servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And in the New International Version, it says, I have nothing but a small jar of olive oil. And see, we think about the olive oil and the anointing as a anointing so I can fall out in the spirit and anoint me so that I can go and run to the nations. And But you know what? The olive oil was precious to them because it was also a healing bomb. They also used it to clean their face. The anointing oil had multiple purposes within it. And that's one of the things that God would have us to know is that that precious oil, that precious anointing on the inside of us is more than just for us to go around and look cute and shout hallelujah, but that oil we're supposed to be able to carry out with us and be changers, world changers on the outside. 
people all down the street. He said, shut the door. Shut the door. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought her the vessels. And she poured it out. And the doors that were shut, we're not just, sometimes we think about when somebody talks about shutting the door, we think about shutting people out. And there are some people that we need to shut the door. But sometimes the doors that we need to shut are the ones right here on our head. Shut the door, that's mouth. That's all that's coming. Shut that mouth up. Because sometimes we are the mess. Sometimes it's too many words coming out of our mouth. Sometimes we talk too much. Sometimes we got a lot to say. And he's like, I need you just to shut the door. Why are you speaking through your mouth? Okay, God. Are we praising in church and complaining Monday through Sunday? Shut the door. Are we encountering situations with people that God would desire to move in, but we too busy giving them a piece of our minds? Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door of your ear. You can't go around hearing everything. And then think your spirit's going to be all right. If I spend my day listening to a bunch of murmuring and complaining and bitter, upset people, guess what? All they going to get on the inside of me. And I'm going to be having it fall out my door, too. He said, you shut the door. And the thing about it is that Alicia gave her these instructions, but he was not even in there with her. Come on, she just had to obey what he said. Yeah. And for us, they can preach their hearts out, but if we don't go home and shut the door and do some things on our own, we're going to be in the same place. Praise and shout and no change. Alicia wasn't there with her to make sure that she did it. She shut the door. She was obedient. And the thing is that in addition to hearing it, we got to take it home and do some application of it. In addition to hearing it and shouting it and writing it down in notes and repeating it and waving our hands to it, we got to go home and shut the door and apply it. Jesus, she obeyed. And listen to this. Ha! Jesus, after she shut the door, if you go to verse 6, she shut the door to everything that was behind her. So after she shut the door to everything that was behind her, in verse 6 it says, now it came to pass. Earlier we were talking about right now. Some of our nails are on the other side of our obedience. We want it now, 
all of the vessels were full. Everything that she needed was not in the house. Sometimes we're going around looking superficially for things to answer the problems. And God is like the answer is already on the inside of you.
recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you was walking in the light, the beautiful light. You endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, you know, sometimes it looks like you're laughing stock. 